Hi, I'm Mark James with Panther Protection Services. Today we're going to talk a little bit about home defense. Particularly we're going to talk about your home defense toolkit and what are some of the key elements and components which should be part of your toolkit. First and foremost, what's the family plan? When your alarm goes off at 3 o'clock in the morning, what is your, what has your family been instructed to do? If you have any out-of-town guests, what have your guests been instructed to do? Have you even taken the time to instruct your guests if the alarm goes off in the middle of the night, what's our plan? So just some things you want to think about. Make sure you have a family plan. My uncle, when he comes to visit from time to time, he's a military veteran. Very good with a firearm, very good with edge weapons. But does he understand what our plan is for our house when the alarm goes off in the middle of the night? A couple of things that I want you to think about. First and foremost is your weapon of choice. How are you prepared to defend your family? I have three of the more common weapons that a lot of people use for home defense. For many people, that weapon of choice is a handgun. They're not good or bad, it's just their weapon of choice. Many people will consider a shotgun as their home defense tool. The tool is really irrelevant, it's understanding the plan around how you're going to defend your family. For some people, for some people, an AR-15 is their tool of choice. It's not good or bad, it's just a tool designed to handle, to handle the need. The most important thing when you think about the toolkit, the toolkit is nothing more than a carrying system to allow you to take the rest of the tools and make them mobile. For some people, that toolkit can be as simple as a little pouch that I can fill with my tools, throw it around my neck, and go start to prepare to defend my family. For other people, it might be some type of pouch that they use which they can put their tools in. For other people, it might be a tactical vest. I'm not allocating anybody to get ready to go join SWAT, but if your alarm goes off at 3 o'clock in the morning, there's a good chance you're probably sleeping in your boxers, and you're not going to have the ability to put a belt on and to put on either a, a paddle holster or some type of belt-contained type of holster. So think about how am I going to deal with what goes bump in the night at 3 o'clock in the morning, and how will I be dressed for that occasion? Next thing you want to think about is a cell phone. Got to be ready to call 911. Have you called 911? If your family knows to stay in a particular room, maybe you use a cell phone to give instructions to your family when it's time to move around the house, if it is time to move at all. When you use your cell phone, when you call 911, a couple of things you want to make sure you let them know. Say home invasion in progress versus burglary. Burglary means somebody broke in and stole my stuff, come in three hours and write a report. Home invasion in progress gives the police a little, little different sense of urgency around coming to your dwelling. Make sure we have a cell phone. Next thing you want to think about is extra ammo. In the event I shoot my magazine dry, do I have extra ammo in which to defend my family? Flashlight, another key ingredient. You have to be able to see the threat to be able to make sure that it is an actual threat that needs to be neutralized. Some people, when you start thinking about lights, some people have lights which, are, which will mount directly on, onto their weapons, another option. Even if I have a weapon mounted light, I always have a separate flashlight for in the event that this, this light doesn't work. Next thing is keys. Hopefully all of us have double-sided deadbolts in our house. We might need the keys to either lock a bad guy in a particular part of the house or to unlock a door so we can escape with our family. So make sure you have keys so you can Get out of your house, and if you need be, get to your vehicle, depending on how your house is laid out. Another thing is a tape measure. People say, why a tape measure? I'm not looking at, for you to go measure anything when something goes bump in the night, but this is a proactive tool. What I want you to measure is, what are the key distances within your house that you need to be prepared to defend? And once you understand those distances, that should transfer to your live fire at the range to be able to be very consistent and proficient with the ability to protect your family from those particular distances. So once again, quick review, we got to have a plan. Second thing is our weapon of choice. Third thing is the tool is, is the toolkit itself. What am I going to use to put these tools in so that I can be mobile and stay in the fight? Cell phone allows us to be able to communicate Extra ammo allows us to stay into the fight, maintain continuity of fire. Third thing is the flashlight, so we need to see we can illuminate the bad guy. 
If you don't need the light, don't turn the light on. The best thing about your house is you know your house. The bad guy doesn't know your house. If you don't need a light, don't turn it on. Let the bad guy trip over the nightstand, the coffee table, or any other hazard that could be posed to that particular bad guy. Keys, once again, so we can lock doors or unlock doors. And those are the basic components of the home defense plan. Stay aware, stay focused, and stay safe.